So we are going to be comparing the AMD Radeon R7 360 against the integrated Radeon R7 found in the AMD A10 7850. There's going to be a total of three tests, with the last test being against the integrated R7 overclocked at 1108 MHz. So you can see from this handy table at the top here, I am running Ubuntu GNOME 15.4 on Linux kernel 3.19. And since we're just benchmarking hardware here, the actual platform is irrelevant. The CPU is of course an AMD A10 7850K. The graphics drivers are AMD Catalyst 15.7, the latest graphics drivers available right now. Power supply is a Corsair CX650M. 650 watt. The CPU cooler is an Antec cooler 620 water cooler. The RAM sticks are both Kingston HyperX Savage running at about 2400 megahertz. The motherboard is an MSI 888XM Gaming and the case I'm using is a Corsair Carbide Air 240 which is a micro ATX case. The benchmark data is represented as frames per second in this nice little line chart here. The numbers on the left hand side represent the actual frames per second and of course the bottom is the graphics card being tested. Running the Furmark benchmark with the R7 360 got us 29 frames per second, the integrated R7 got us 9 frames per second, and the integrated graphics while overclocked got us 10 frames per second. So that means increasing the integrated GPU's clock from 720, which is a stock clock, to 1108 only yielded one extra frame per second. Moving on to test mark 64-bit, the R7 360 got us 85, the integrated R7 got us 38, and the overclocked integrated R7 got us 56. Moving on to Julia floating point 64, the R7 360 got us 85 frames per second, the integrated R7 got us a whopping 18 frames per second and the overclocked integrated R7 got us 27 frames per second. Moving on to the marble benchmark, the R7 360 got us 80 frames per second, the integrated R7 got us 36, and the overclocked integrated R7 got us 54. And with the grid of cylinders, the R7 360 got us 29 frames per second, the integrated R7 got us 13 frames per second, and the overclocked integrated R7 got us 19 frames per second. Moving on to the worms benchmark, this is a new one. It's a very heavy test of anti anti-aliasing, which traditionally the Linux Catalyst driver has a very big problem with. So the R7 360 got us 16 frames per second, the integrated R7 got us 4 frames per second, and the overclocked integrated R7 only got us 6 frames per second. So the next benchmark is Counter-Strike Source, which is the built-in video stress test benchmark. Since the Source engine is a relatively old engine as far as graphics engine goes, the frames per second is going to be a little bit higher, but I guess that just increases the resolution. So the R7 360 got us 2 264 frames per second, while the integrated R7 only got us 119 frames per second. That's a huge drop. Overclocking the integrated R7 only got us up to 150 frames per second. And the Valley benchmark with the R7 360, we got 30 frames per second. The integrated R7 got us 12, and the overclocked integrated R7 got us 16. And the last new benchmark is the Metro 2033 benchmark. This is a really, really great one. The R7 360 got 38 frames per second on this one. The integrated the integrated R7 got us 18 frames per second, and overclocking the integrated graphics only got us 19. So this is an interesting benchmark, if not unfair, because the integrated graphics shares a die with the actual CPU, which means it's benefiting from the water cooler. And you can see that from the chart here. I used Furmark to stress the GPU, and I got up to about 81 degrees Celsius before I had to cut it off. On the other hand, the integrated R7 only got up to 29, and it was holding 29 for a good 10-15 minutes. And then overclocked, it only got up to 32, and once again, it held at 32 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. So that is going to wrap this benchmark up. It should come to no surprise that the R7 360 uh, pretty much blew the doors off of the integrated R7, even when it was overclocked. 